perhaps there's no other perennial in my area that's more popular than lantana. It's everywhere. It seems like every yard has lantana in it. And it comes in a lot of different forms. It's been bred to be dwarf. It's been bred to be shrub form. And we get a myriad of colors. It's really a great all around perennial. There's, there's yellows and reds and pinks and whites and all different color combinations in between there. Just a great all around perennial for our area. So our goal today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to take cuttings off of the parent plant, how to stick cuttings. We're gonna look at three methods of taking care of cuttings. I'm gonna get some B-roll film from my greenhouse at Sneed State where I've done this with my students and I'll show you the results. Now, those are grown in a greenhouse, but it's the same type of settings. We can actually emulate a greenhouse with one of the methods that I'm gonna show you today. So hang with me till the end of the video. I've got some beautiful cuttings that I wanna show you. So let's talk about what I'm looking for in terms of the correct type of cutting that I want to uh, use for reproduction. So really what I'm looking for here is something with a, not a lot of flowers. So this one has a lot of flowers. That's not a good one. And something that is not going to be hardened off. So what do I mean by hardened off? If you look in here, see how this wood is brown? That's hardened off wood. We want what we call semi hardwood cuttings. And if I look, there's one right here. See, there's not a whole lot of flower activity on it. And if we look back at the bark, we have some green. So I'm gonna count back about three or four nodes. So a node is a site of vegetative development. So there's one set of nodes, there's two set of nodes, there's three set of nodes. So I'm gonna cut that. And this is what we'll start with. We're gonna remove the lower leaves and so these nodes here, what's going to happen is roots will eventually grow from these nodes. So you're, when you go to root your cuttings, this is where the roots will first come out are these nodes. So we're going to go ahead and take off these leaves. We're going to take off these leaves. So right now I'm left with something like this but we still have too much leaf material. That's my cutting. That is, that is what we'll root. So I'm gonna go through, we're gonna find a few more here. So here again, nothing with a lot of flower. That's not good. That one has a lot of flower. Um, there's a lot of, that's that wood starting to harden off a little bit right there. So I'm doing this later in the year, and so it's going to be a little bit harder to find some, some good cuttings. There's, this is not terrible. It's got a few smaller flowers on there. Nice green wood. The normal time to do this is going to be in uh, late spring through the summer. And here again, just real fast. We're going to remove these leaves. And that's actually a little long, so what I'll do is that's one, two, three, four. I'll cut just below that fourth node right there. And that will be our cutting. So we've got two cuttings here. I'm going to go ahead off camera and get uh, like three or four more. And we'll head back and I'll show you how to prepare your cutting. Okay, so we're, we're back at the table with our cuttings here. And so let's walk through the process of what needs to be done with this. So after we have our cuttings, you're gonna need some rooting hormone. I'll do my best to leave a link down in the product description below for rooting hormone and some potting mix and whatever else you may need to complete this project. But we need rooting hormone. You need something to hold your lantana in. I'm just using an old six pack that I got from uh, buying plants in the past, probably from Lowe's or Home Depot or our local retail garden center. The media that I'm using, I've already got this one prepared. 
is just peat moss. There's nothing special about this. There's no vermiculite, there's no perlite, there's no fertilizer in this. It is just peat moss. So what needs to happen is you need to take your rooting hormone and what you need to do is either pour your a little bit of rooting hormone in a separate container or pour it in the cap. And the reason we do this is I propagate a lot of plants. And if I just go randomly sticking different cuttings into the bottle and one of them has a pathogen on it, I run the risk of having pathogens in my rooting hormone. And I'm just spreading that around the yard or, my, or where I'm growing cuttings. Uh, so when I'm done with this rooting hormone, I'll dump it out, I'll take some alcohol, I'll clean the lid, and then put the lid back on. But it's pretty simple what we want to do. We're going to take one of our prepared cuttings that we took off the shrub. And what I like to do is just wound the side of my cutting and just enough to expose the cambium layer. So the cambium layer is the vascular tissue that's underneath. It doesn't need to be a very deep cut at all. I'm going to expose that to the rooting hormone. It doesn't take a lot of rooting hormone. Any excess, just knock it off. And use a pencil or your pinky, make a hole down in your media. And I would go about as deep as you can go. I went all the way down to the edge of my, the base of my pinky. Put that down in there and cover it up. I like to get two or three of those nodes down into the soil because here again, that's an oppor opportunistic place for roots to come out is from those nodes. And so we're just gonna repeat that process. You can do a, a six pack of these and maybe a minute. I'm going to go through these real quick. You could propagate several dozens of these in a matter of an hour. And we're going to do five cuttings here. Uh, I had six. I must have dropped. I must have dropped one on the way back over here. Uh, it's probably laying on the ground somewhere. So for demonstration, we're going to run with five cuttings here, and our last one. And see, I just did that in a matter of maybe a, not even a minute. You can do a lot of these really quick. All right. There's our cuttings. I would always encourage you to do multiple cuttings uh, because no matter how successful you are at, at propagating plants you're never going to have a 100 percent take rate so what am i going to do with this it's imperative that we keep this wet and we want to water this as soon as possible and so peat moss is it's odd it's going to be hydrophobic until it's hydrophilic and that's just a fancy scientific way of saying it repels water until it starts to get a little wet and then it really soaks up the water so i'm just going to very slowly water this and you can see the water wanting to stand on the peak so you just have to go real slow at first let that soak in do a little more. You have to keep this wet. If it dries out, you'll you'll lose your cutting. So if you go with this method, you are going to be obligated to water these every day, probably for about six weeks. All right, you've got to keep them wet. A better option is this. And this is one of the methods that I like to use. If you have a watering saucer, okay, put it underneath water over the top, get your peat moss wet. Once it's wet, fill up your saucer with about an inch of water. Capillary action will take place here. So the water is going to be absorbed by the peat moss and move upward through the water column and it will keep these moist. 
better yet, a third option. And this is one that I really like to use. You don't need anything fancy. I'm literally using one of my wife's old lettuce containers that she got from the grocery store. These make little, great little propagation uh, media holders. You, it doesn't have to be this brand or even for lettuce. Uh, if you want to use like a strawberry container or a blueberry container, those work well too. So what I do, I take this and I just drill maybe half a dozen holes into the bottom of it because we need some uh, drainage holes because this will hold water. And I'm just using a 1 8 inch drill bit. You don't want a big drill bit because what will happen is your holes will be really big and then peat moss falls out the bottom. So use a very small drill hole. Drill you some wheat holes in the bottom. All right, so I got several, I did a few off camera. So we've got several holes in the bottom of this. We'll fill this up with peat moss and water it. And then we're gonna put our cuttings in it. So let's take a look at how that's gonna look. Okay, so I filled this up roughly about a third of the way full with peat moss. If you have any clumps, make sure to bust the clumps out. And for demonstration purposes, what I'll do, I just, I'm gonna pull these cuttings out. Same process, you would put your rooting hormone on here, but we're just gonna plant them. And these are a little tall for this. You may have to cut some of them back. So I'll just go ahead for demonstration we're going to cut that one back and you just plant them like you would in your six pack. Now, what are the advantages to putting these in a container like this, as opposed to just growing them out more in the open? We are going to be able to maintain a very humid environment with this particular method. You're not going to have to water near as often. This acts like a mini greenhouse. And so as long as it's moist in there, this will work. You just close this up after you water it. Put some water in here. And here again, my recommendation would be put a saucer underneath this because you can see there it is going to drain. We, dr we drilled wheat poles in it. So put a saucer underneath it. And this acts just like a little greenhouse. Now, word of caution if you elect to go with this method. Do not put this in full sun. You will cook your cuttings. If you have like a east or a north facing window, you can stick it up in there. Don't put it in a south facing window. Give it some indirect sunlight and wait about six weeks and you will have some great cuttings. All right, so we're at my greenhouse here at Sneed State Community College and my students have been propagating all sorts of plants throughout the semester. Some of these are lantana. I'm gonna pull a few out and just show you for example. So we did these in early September. Uh, today is November the 2nd, so for about eight weeks now we've had these cuttings growing and i want you to look at some of these roots so that is rooted completely to the bottom of the pot we'll just pull another one out here for example here's another lantana it's rooted through as well so this is a good method to propagate lantana um, if you can find the right media and just keep them moist is all you have to do and looking across all of these cuttings all the lantana that i see every one of them rooted uh, so pretty easy to root so the the three methods again so you can just grow in a normal six pack you can grow in a six pack that has a saucer underneath it and water from the bottom up or get you a lettuce container or, or any kind of container you could do this in a rubbermaid if you wanted to drill holes in it and grow them in my opinion probably the best way is to 
go with this method. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor, and until next time, happy gardening.